What up guys, Adrian from eMotorcycle, and today's big front page story on eMotorcycle.com is that uh, Norton Motorcycles has once again gone bankrupt, but not only that, this current instance of Norton Motorcycles, because it's been owned by like 10 different people or companies over the last 100 years, uh, this current instance of Norton Motorcycles, it seems like this whole time it's just really been a scam to take motorcyclist money. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, Norton Motorcycles, a bit of their history, but mostly what's been happening in the last 10 to 12 years and why people suspect that this whole last 10 years of Norton has been nothing more than a big cash grab. So getting right into it, I got the article loaded up here and uh, yeah, the Norton Motorcycle Company it was originally founded over 120 years ago in 1898 by a guy whose last name was, you guessed it, his last name was Norton. And at the time, Norton was, uh, it was actually pretty successful. They were known for good quality stuff, good race stuff, along with Triumph, which makes this bike behind me. It was known as like one of the big powerhouse British motorcycle companies that everybody wanted to have. They managed to kind of stave off competition from the Japanese for pretty well uh, until their parent company, uh, parent company AMC went bankrupt. And ever since that happened in the 60s, it just seems like there's been this kind of constant flow of people buying up Norton's assets, kind of going somewhere with it, and then it's sort of falling apart or people buying it just to flip it. And my favorite was actually, there was a Canadian guy who owned Norton and his name was Nelson Scalbania and he was known for flipping sports teams. He was known for flipping real estate. Basically his idea was buy low, sell high, and rinse, wash, repeat. Scalbania, he was the first person to ever sign Wayne Gretzky. So if you know hockey, you know who that is. And he was also convicted of criminal fraud. It wasn't related to Norton, but it still kind of shows you the kind of weasel type character that we're dealing with here. Um, after that, Norton went to America, where it was picked up by a couple of good dudes from out of Oregon, who I honestly believe these guys, uh, they were led by Kenny Dreer. I think they had the best of intentions. I'll link to that article where I have the full descriptions. I'm trying to just summarize it really quickly to make it a, a quick watch for you guys here. All the stories in there. But in the end, at least, you know, Kenny's team was good enough that anybody who put money down for a Norton bike that they couldn't deliver on, those people all got their money back in full. So that's good. And then comes this guy that I'll zoom in on this picture so you can see his face. I mean, there's a guy who just looks guilty. <laughs> his name is Stuart Garner. And uh, Stuart Garner... He's been described as a high school dropout who got a job as a gatekeeper at a prep school. And the prep school was described as a great place to study upper class twits and learn how easy they were to scam. I don't know anything for sure here, but I'm going to kind of tell you when Stuart Garner, this guy, went to purchase Norton, he offered as collateral to a loan because he needed to find several different ways to get money. He had some money from here, some money from there, so that all of it would add up to enough that he could purchase Norton. Two of the ways that he got money to purchase Norton were both really shady in my opinion. The first way is he offered up a company that he owned as collateral. So if I default on my loan, you can have this company. The thing is, he didn't actually own the whole company. He was only a 50% owner of the company, but he offered the entire company up as collateral, which is just, it's crazy. And that's not something you're supposed to do to your partners. Who knows how he even got away with it. That was crazy thing number one of how he got money. Crazy thing number two of how he got the money to purchase Norton I got some articles linking to it. I don't want to get too, too into the weeds, but basically he was the recipient of money that you could say kind of came from a scam. And what I mean by that is the two guys who were kind of associates who set him up with this million pound loan, they were actually arrested and convicted of fraud. Now there was no dirt ever found on Stuart Garner, but I mean, you have to wonder if, if two of his buddies are lending him money and those two guys are being locked up, how squeaky clean is this Gardner guy that he had no idea that something wrong or something fishy was happening, right? Anyway, so that's how Stuart Gardner got to have enough money to purchase Morton in the first place. Gardner seems like he's trying to get all this money coming in from all these different places. And just what the heck is he spending it on? Well, I want to take you guys back in time to a little castle called Versailles. Versailles is where the kings of France from Louis XIV, aka Louis Bourbon, Louis Bourbon lived down to, I think, Louis XVI, which was his grandson when the French Revolution kicked off and they started trying to find all the monarchy and cut off all their heads. So all the French monarchs, they had to leave France to go somewhere safe because all the people were uprising and they wanted to kill all the monarchs. So where did the monarchy, where did the royal family go to live? The royal family went to go and live in a place called Donington Hall. Donington Hall in the UK is the same place that Stuart Garner purchased with the money that was raised from Norton. This is crazy because the money he was getting was from the pension fund of seniors. So old people in the UK, they had these pension funds. This was the part of their whole retirement plan. And they put that money towards, they put their pension funds into Norton. 
And what Garner thought was the best thing for Norton to do was to buy Donington Hall, which was a massive, probably, I mean, here's a picture of it, massive, beautiful mansion. It's called a mansion. Let's be real. It's more like a, a mini castle. And he wanted Donington Hall to be the headquarters of Norton. In reality, Donington Hall was basically, yeah, it was the headquarters of Norton, but it was also his own personal private castle is what it really was. He put the money from these pensioners not into research and development, not into you know, making sure he was paying his suppliers. He put it into buying a property fit for kings, essentially. Let me ask you this. Why would any motorcycle company need to purchase an Aston Martin? Unless it was because their owner wanted to be driving around an Aston Martin. Let me ask you this. Why would any motorcycle company need to purchase not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six Aston Martins? That's right. Stuart Gardner used the money that was supposed to go to Norton Motorcycles to buy himself probably the biggest house he can get himself into, and not one, but six Aston Martins. I've lost track of how many red flags we were at with this whole Norton Motorcycles situation, but it's getting pretty crazy. That's not even the worst thing, though. The worst thing is that there's a bit of a pyramid scheme, like a Ponzi scheme going on here. And that is, sure, Norton did produce several hundred motorcycles under Garner's ownership. But for those several hundred that they produced, there were hundreds more, if not thousands more, of people who had put deposits down and some had even paid in full for motorcycles that were never produced and never received. In the case of Norton, we actually had reports that, check out this picture, I'm going to just show it in here. This is a tweet from a guy named John Hamilton, who allegedly bought a Norton, so he brought it back to the factory, Donington Hall, head office, whatever, to have it paint corrected, and Norton was so bad at paying their suppliers that the suppliers stopped giving them the parts they needed to finish the bikes, so when a warranty bike came in, they would just take parts off of the warranty bike to finish new bikes, to send those new bikes out to get paid for the new bikes. Wow. I've, I've not heard of any other motorcycle company or any legitimate business doing anything like this ever before. This is absolutely crazy. So, so what comes next? I mean, there's speculation that it's, it's rough. There's speculation that Garner may have actually sold certain intellectual properties that were associated with Norton to a Chinese company. If that's the case, then it means that we could have Chinese made Norton clones out there in the future, which I think severely cheapens the Norton brand and the demand for the Norton brand. Uh, but the real unfortunate thing here isn't that the Norton brand may never come back or people may never want it or that the next generation of Nortons may just be these Chinese things. The real uh, sins here is that a lot of seniors were shafted out of their pensions, money that they probably will never get back, and that a lot of motorcyclists who put deposits on bikes and who put, in some cases, paid in full for bikes, they're never going to receive their bikes, they're never going to get their money back. There is an ombudsman who's been looking into all of this, who's going to be apparently going after Garner. That's if they can find him. Speculation is that Garner owns, or at least did own, a game ranch down in South Africa, where it's believed he's stashed away millions of Norton money down there. You know, will he be brought to justice if he is in fact guilty of all the stuff that it seems like he's guilty of? Maybe, hopefully, maybe not. I'm sure, the Norton brand will, in some variation, some form, be coming back maybe even by the Chinese. This is definitely another sad chapter in the Norton story. If you guys found this video interesting, please give it a like. I would really appreciate that. And if you want to see more motorcycle stories and more talking about uh, motorcycle news, please hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate that a million. Thank you guys so much for your time. That's all, folks. Ride safe. Peace.